drive this thing straight up to their headquarters. Looks like it's part of the retreat. Germans are supposed to make great cars. What's the matter with this? There you go. Come on. That's it. That's it. Any word yet on where those German paratroopers are supposed to be? Division says to stop worrying about German paratroopers and to start the artillery support, sir. Colonel, Major Danko's battalion is pinned down. They're screaming for artillery support. Danko's men aren't where they're supposed to be. They're supposed to be right here. Those are their orders. Sir, they overran the German encampments an hour ago. Those orders are no longer operational. How am I supposed to give artillery support if they're not where they're supposed to be? Sir, Division HQ says to initiate artillery support or you will be relieved. Tell the batteries to commence firing as for the original order of battle. you son you're only a corporal and I want to kill me a colonel yes sir yes, yes sir but, but they weren't where they were supposed to be yes sir yes yes sir stay you you wiped out my battalion major put that gun down that's an order men kill 150 major don't do it they'll hang you We'll be roommates in hell. Men! Any of my men! Decor, I suppose it does have a certain something. In a rustic, concrete sort of way. Sir. At ease, Major. Oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, private. I'm Major General Worth, Commander 12th Division. I'm impressed. Let's see what we have here. Enlisted at the age of 15, saw combat in World War I. Decorated for bravery with a battlefield commission to the rank of second lieutenant. Which rank you held for ten years. Well, there was a certain prejudice in the peacetime army against guys who weren't West Pointers, General. Especially guys with names like Danko. You never had a command, Danko. You were always somebody's second until your battalion commander was killed in action and then you took over. And now it's life in prison. Yeah. That's what I did for my summer vacation, General. What about you? There used to be a unit in this command called the Dirty Dozen. It was made up of deadbeats and foulers, just like you, Danko. The commander was a major right. He was wounded on the last mission, so they shipped him stateside. I could use a unit like that again. And you're just the man to command that unit. I'm going to give you the lowest temporary rank, a 40-year-old second lieutenant. And if by some miracle you happen to survive, I will consider a pardon. Why? Sir. Because I need a small combat unit to carry out this mission. It's in a gray area, if you will. If we don't succeed, nobody will know that we gave the order. <laughs> General, I'm shocked. Oh? I'm genuinely shocked, sir. I mean, what you're suggesting is highly unorthodox, to say the least. Why a general could be court-martialed is a 
suggesting such a thing. Besides, the deal's not good enough, sir. That wasn't a deal you were just offered, mister. Those are your orders. Forgive me for correcting the general, but I don't believe you could give me orders. I'm a prisoner, remember? The court martial said so. So you're not ordering anything. You're negotiating, sir. Don't get cute with me, Danko. You're not that funny. Just remember one thing. I came up through the ranks just like you. By the way, General, aren't we going to need a detachment of MPs to guard my foul-ups during their training? Yes, you will. Well, there's a certain Sergeant Butts here that I've established a warm personal relationship with. I'd like you to sign him to me. You want him? You got him. Take my hand, Sergeant. I can make it on my own. Oh, this is terribly gallant of you, you devil. In my imagination, you get the impression General Worth doesn't completely trust me. Sir? Must feel like old home we see on it, huh? Hungarian. Ah, <laughs> uh, so you're part of uh, intelligence, huh? No. I was with the partisan unit first. Then I came west, joined the American army. They put me in intelligence. Well, you were assigned to interrogate German POWs. Apparently, you got a little rough with your interrogation of one particular German officer. A little rough. Yeah, I gather he was willing to cooperate, work with us. Cooperate? No. I don't cooperate with a man who slaughtered half my village. I canceled his work contract. No, you murdered him. Yes. Very slowly. Fucky, you sound like my kind of guy. So what do you want to do? Stay here and get hung a week from Tuesday or come and kill Germans with me. Lee Dillon, 25 years, hard labor for forgery and counterfeiting. <laughs> How'd you get caught? How'd they get caught? Well, it wasn't a workmanship, I can tell you that much, because that was flawless. I mean, it was beautiful. But I got a little greedy. And I was uh, teamed up with some of the local talent. Real intellectuals, these guys. And uh, I stole the plates back from them. <laughs> uh, greed. Simple greed. But Mr. Leeds, I can get you out of here. I need a forger and a counterfeiter. Oh, hey, well, uh, welcome to my world. I need one to drop behind enemy lines with me. What? You know, you know, I knew the minute I saw you. The guy your age and he's only a second lieutenant. I mean, I knew you must have been stupid, but uh, I'm an artist. I'll have to take a check on that one, you know what I mean? 
Oh, well, of course, if you don't want to volunteer, I won't hold it against you. Hey, Lieutenant, you can hold it anywhere you want to hold it. In fact, for you, I got a couple of suggestions where to hold it. Oh, sure. Don't you buzz off. All right, huh? You're spoiling my view. I understand. I understand. In fact, just to show you there's no hard feelings, I'll even have General Worth give you a full pardon. And then I will personally see to it that every hood in London knows exactly where you are. Get my drift? See you in the streets, pal. Sir! Private Lee is reporting for duty, sir. I mean, look at me. I'm saluting and everything. I mean, if I'm not a soldier, who is? <laughs> I mean, Uncle Sam needs you and uh, me. The both of us, right? This is an aerial view of the sub-pens at Bremerhaven. Now, G2 estimates at least three wolf packs being refitted at the present time. That's the last mission against submarine pens. As you can see, they were waiting for us. Heavy losses in planes and men. No significant penetration of the target. A new German radar blew any element of surprise. They really tore our planes apart. That's when headquarters called off the attack. Now it's right behind that wall in the basement. You blow that installation and the Air Force will do the rest. That looks simple enough, General. What do you need me for? Why is this such a gray area? The Germans have set up this little top-secret radar installation right in the middle of that hospital. And that hospital happens to be for real. Nuns, priests, and civilian patients. Well, how do we attack it and blow it up? Without killing them in the crossfire, sir. That's up to you, Daniel. That's why it's a gray area. And our allies would not take kindly to the possibility of us killing innocent nationals. And if anything goes wrong, you never gave the orders. Troops under your command never cared them out, is that it, sir? You said it, Danko, not me. You know, killing nuns, General, isn't exactly what I joined the Army for. You're not in the Army, Danko. You're a prisoner, remember? All right, let's say we do this. It doesn't look that tough. It's not that heavily defended. Why don't we just hit the radar with a bazooka and go home? No, no, no. You have to knock off the radar room, and you can't get to that with a bazooka. It still doesn't look that tough. It's going to be very tough, Danko. That countryside is just crawling with patrols. Now, initially, you'll be wearing German uniforms, which unfortunately means that if you get captured, you will not be a prisoner of war, you'll be a spy, which means that they will shoot you. Of course. You have three weeks to get your unit into shape. You'll drop down on the 12th just outside of radar range. Now, in Bruges, you'll contact the local resistance leader of Father Lormond at the Church of St. Helen. Any questions? Yeah. How do we get out? You hit your spot on time, Danko. An RAF plane will come in at nightfall, and the partisans will lead you there. And I sincerely hope it won't be a small plane. Lebec. Jean. Born in New Orleans. Airborne demolitions man. Life imprisonment for raping a colonel's wife. Yeah, well, that's what she called me. Of course, she called it many things, many times. Sometimes she called it, oh, baby. And sometimes she called it, yeah, honey. But when her husband walked in, Call it a rape. If Roy don't go, I don't go. Your brother's a weasel, Vern. You're a crack shot, strong as an ox. The deal's only for you. If Roy don't go, I don't go. Well, if you don't go, they're gonna hang you. Just, Just like they're gonna hang your brother. Gee, Lieutenant, my hands are tied. Um, I don't go, he don't go. <laughs> you tell him to go. It's his chance to live. He's just going to get killed anyway. Lieutenant, we're good together. He's the brawn, I'm the brain. Well, then how come the two of you wound up in here with a death sentence? I don't go, he don't go. 
My brother don't go, I don't go. All right, he can go. You can go, Roy. Yeah! Okay, Vern will go. Roy, where, where are we going? I don't know. Hey, Lieutenant. Where are we going? You sure you two didn't go to West Point? didn't give the orders here, Vern, I do. Now fall in. Yeah. All right, girls, we're going to clear up this little misunderstanding right now. I give the orders, you carry them out. You want Vern to hurt somebody, Roy? Have him hurt me. Hurt him bad, Vern. Wait a minute. Now here, hold it. They're going to trouble. You cheated, Lieutenant. That's not fair. Burn, that didn't hurt just a little bit. No. What you got? Come on. on you now? How do you tell Vern that I'm in charge? Huh? Listen, Vern, whatever the lieutenant says goes, okay? <sighs> okay, buddy. All right, somebody help Vern on his feet. Well, it looks like this little exercise wasn't a waste of my time after all. But from here on out, you hit anybody with that nightstick without my orders, and I will personally see to it that you have it for breakfast. Yes, sir. Well, that was a lot of fun, Vern. Like that?
Sergeant Butts tells me your nickname's Tarzan. Oh, yeah. That's sort of a joke. Oh, were you raised by chimpanzees? No. No, before the war, I was going to be an actor. I was an actor, sort of. Oh, what do you mean, sort of? Well, I modeled. Men's bathing suits. For department stores and stuff. And this guy saw it and said they were going to give me a screen test and make me the next Tarzan in the movie. Johnny Farrell, next Johnny Wise Mueller. What happened? Pearl Harbor. I enlisted. Seems like if you're a man, that wasn't the time to be swinging from vines in Hollywood. So I learned my way around weapons. And here I am. So why did you assault this captain? Well, now, I didn't know he was a captain. He was in a shower. Officer showers were busted. I mean, I didn't see any bars tattooed on his shoulders before I hit him. Why did you hit him? He took my shampoo. Your shampoo? Yeah, my shampoo. It was special shampoo. I used to be a model. You can't get that stuff just anywhere. So I decked him. He had his head on a soap dish going down and got ten stitches. And I got ten years. Why don't we get out of here? Go on a suicide mission? A suicide mission, huh? Real hero stuff. Yeah? If I do come back alive, that'd be pretty good publicity, wouldn't it? Secret mission behind enemy lines. Like Errol Flynn or something. Okay. Let's call it a career move. Please, hey, wait! You forget what to do when an officer enters the room? I'm a prisoner, not a soldier. I don't care if you're a trained monkey. You hit the floor. Sound off like a man. Jankowski. But. You certainly have a way with words, and I'll say that for you. Well, so far, we've got a couple of killers, a forger, Hungarian, Creole lover boy, covered his pants down, and a Jewish hitman named Moskowitz. Well, kid named Farrell. I almost played Tarzan in the movies. Yeah, man. Wow, you've got to be kidding me. Oh, yeah. Over there, baby. How are you? Oh. Well, that's a girl. Well, that's what nuns are, General. I need somebody that can go straight into that hospital. Yeah. Ah, she looks a lot better in a habit than Vern Buboff would. Maybe not as good as Farrell. Oh, and uh, last but not least, Kale Brody. Okie, doing 10 years trying to kill a Mexican. Paco Fuentes, Mexican. He's in here for trying to kill an Okie. It's him. You want some more, buddy? Come, Come on. on. Oh, you two know each other. Do you want me to break it up, Jeez, Lieutenant? Man. I'm going to take your head off. They're dance. Why well, cut in? Oh. 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 You said that there were going to be 12 of us. It only makes 10. Me makes 11. There's a 12. Oh. Oh. Sergeant, you didn't think I'd leave my sweet butts behind, did you? Oh. 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 Stay up. Oh. Stay up. Oh. Okay, boys and girls. We have exactly three weeks. Prepare for a mission we should have three months to prepare for. We have a very strict final exam. Only two grades. Succeed or die. Now, after we've completed our mission, an RAF plane will be sent in to bring us out. However, that plane can only get in and take us out if we've succeeded in destroying the enemy's radar installation. Which is our objective. So if we don't succeed in our mission, we don't come out. I trust that's sufficient motivation for each of you to take your training very seriously. Get it down, you 
tell me about it. This is not a game. You get wounded out there in the field, your life is going to depend on whether your buddy can get your butt back out of danger. You're going to have to start taking care of each other. Well, then no dinner for Moscow. I will kill you! 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 Tough guy. <laughs> Lee, how many times do I have to tell you you can't be tentative with a knife? You gotta stick him. Stick yeah. him. Yeah, stick him. You need a forger. I'm a forger, not a killer. So... Well, you better learn to be a killer, son. Because if you try that in combat, there's gonna be a live German out there and a dead forger. <laughs> no great loss. All right, I need two more volunteers. Jankowski. Me, 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 I'm a man to it, I'm a man, come on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Lebec! Ah, Lebec, lucky Bec. bum. Come on, make us look good. Come on, monster. Yeah, come on. Can we give him a bath first? See it. Come on. Go! Oh, 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 oh. Yes, yes. You're going to be frog legs before you know it. Well, make believe I'm a big alligator and you need some new shoes. Come on, come on, come on. You're going to be frog legs when you're making them. Oh, 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 oh
Go. Well, how long you reckon it'll take? About five minutes. No more than that. Who oh, are these chimps here? Did we get your people ready, Sergeant? All right, you heard the lieutenant. Get those roadblocks out here. Police I was far away. to be engaged in a public brawl. It's this. Sick rabbit. Unless he's been provoked. I'll do it, sir, but I intend to lodge a formal protest. We'll lodge away, Sergeant, but first arrest these men. As the rest of you, I should think discretion would now be the better part of valor. I should leave quickly, rapidly, so that I'm not forced to take any names. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Right, so. Good boy. God, look at this place. It's a disaster. Mm, yes, quite so, quite so. Terrible mess, this. Oh, well, not to worry. You'll have plenty of time to make repairs while it's being shut down. Shut down? What on earth are you talking about? The orders, I'm afraid. Any establishment that's been the scene of a public brawl between soldiers must be shut down for at least 48 hours until there's inquiry. Well, I've never heard of any such ordinance. There you are. You'll find it all in order. Now, if you'd be kind enough to give me your keys. My keys? Oh, yes. Bears to do so carries a rather stiff penalty, I'm afraid. Five hundred pounds. Five hundred? I shall lodge a protest of my own. I... I'm sure you will, sir. Address it to HMDTF with a note to my attention. Right. Well, I'd rather be shut down than be... Have this place open to this enlisted rabble. This is a gentleman's club. Yes, quite, quite. My guy definitely had an attitude problem. Bird, you think you can move this bar? We're going to liberate it. All right. Oh! What was that you told the club owner, HMD something? HMDDS. The Majesty's Dirty Dozen Force. <laughs> All right, what you see out there behind me is a mock-up of the hospital. 
there to give you a feeling of what you're going to be doing. Land is as follows. We will all be in our positions by 1600 hours. Jankowski, it is a hospital dressed as a nun. By 1610 hours, she takes out the guard at the rear entrance and then gets all the civilians into the chapel. 1615 hours, the partisans start a diversionary attack in the German garrison. At 1617 hours, Roy cuts the garrison line and Byrne covers him, taking out the guards on the tower. Brody and Twinnies will take care of anything that might come through from the garrison. The Beck and Butts go up through the attic and blow the radar room from above. Becky and Leeds join up with Roy and Byrne, take the front entrance. Just if you give cover. And the next time, the Germans aren't going to be made out of cardboard. That's a picture. <laughs> hey, Markowitz, what'd you do before the war, anyway? I was a button man. You sold buttons? Where's this guy from? Hollywood. Figures. No, 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 no. I, uh, I work for the mob. Bugsy Siegel, Maya Lansky. No, you want to push a button on somebody, call me. I'm a hit man. You kill guys. Yeah. You took a poke at him? They call me dumb. <laughs> hey. Why are you nervous? I never killed anybody before on purpose. Never have. You ever killed a person, Becky? A person? No. Only Nazis. You know why you're lucky to be with me instead of those other guys? Why is that, Bean Dip? Because I'm not going to let those Germans shoot you. You ain't, huh? No. I'm going to do that myself when we get back. had a talk with General Worth. Mission's on. We jump tomorrow. With the exception of Sergeant Butts here, everybody in this room is a foul-up. Kill words. And most of us have never been important to anyone or anything in our lives. Well, tomorrow, gentlemen, all that changes. If we succeed in our mission, the whole German subfleet's dead in the water. And I know a lot of people, we'll never know, are going to owe their lives to us. So as of tomorrow, gentlemen, lady, each and every one of you is the most important person in this world. And everybody comes home.
Where are my German speakers? Becky Musgrave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right, no more off-the-road stuff. You see any German patrols? We just keep on double-timing it like we're only following orders. You two. Anybody challenges us, tell them we've been sent out to check out a suspect farmhouse down the road. We got that? You have all in here. All right. Okay, boys, two lines like good little German soldiers. Sergeant! Hold it on me. Down it to me. Okay, keep your animals on the double. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think your foot was on us in the landing zone, Lieutenant. Uh, no four, maybe five. Not everybody got there. All right, we've got to put some ground between us and these patrols. They know we're here. What they don't know is that we look like them. Hey, but what if we do run into that patrol or, or a roadblock, hey. Lieutenant? Hey, our IDs are perfect. Yeah, what if they start asking questions we can't answer? We're not going to be able to bluff our way past them. They're not stupid. Roadblock. Step down. Have their identity papers ready for inspection, Lieutenant. I don't have time for this. We're under Gestapo orders to check all traffic on this road. I'm afraid you'll have to make the time. We have strict orders to stop every vehicle for inspection. I'm not aware of any such order. Who gave them? What unit are you with? Lieutenant, are you aware that there are American commandos in the area? We've already found the parachutes. I know, you idiot. What do you think we are doing out here? Going for picnic? And did you not address these German soldiers? Traveling in a German vehicle. What's a garrison commanding officer's name? 
Colonel Teller, of course. Only checking, Lieutenant. Please, have your men step down. You've asked your questions, and I've answered them. Now... Lieutenant, you can answer our questions, or you can accompany us to Gestapo headquarters, and you can answer theirs. We are under direct orders from Major Hoffman of the Gestapo Security Forces. All right. All right. Get down and take your identity papers. To show this mouse. Single file at attention. Sorry for the inconvenience, Lieutenant Schmidt. You are too insolent for your own good. I intend to report you. What's your name? Fekke. Janosch. It's not a German name. No. It's Hungarian. Kill the man. Well, they're in season, ain't they? They leave the blood alone. Oh, what? Being dip? Or I'll get testy, Brody. Now cut the chatter. Let's get out of here. All right, dump those bodies. You stay here. I'll take care of the body. If I kill them, I can dump his body. Radio in the truck here. Make it sound like you're dying. Tell him you're this guy. Lieutenant Schmidt. Yeah, tell him uh, you've just been ambushed by American soldiers wearing German uniforms. Lieutenant, what are you doing? Tell him they took off on the road to Maldigan. You're going to get us. Right, what are you talking about? Right, hey, 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 listen up, listen up. Look, he knows we're here. There's only two military targets in this area worth sending commandos in for. Radio station of Bruges is the closest, so let him think we went to Maldigan. Let him use half his troops in roadblocks, checking out the other half of his troops. Let him start distrusting every German uniform he sees. Because we're going to be changing into our peasant attire. Colonel, they found the bodies of Schmidt and his men. Are there all blocks, all in position between here and Meidegen? Yes, Colonel. They are stopping every vehicle, every patrol. So far, no sign of them. They're very good, whoever they are. Aren't they, Steiner? Yes, sir. But it's only a matter of time until... Until what? Until we catch them, sir. Or oh, until they do whatever they have come to do. Now, where was Lieutenant Schmidt's body when they found it? With the others, sir. The bodies were thrown in a pile in the woods. Dumped like garbage. How then did he make his last heroic call, our Lieutenant Schmidt? Was there a field radio nearby? The, they didn't have a field radio, sir. There was a radio in the track. And when they found him, was his hand clutching the microphone of the radio in the truck? No, sir. The track wasn't there. We, we haven't found it yet. Hmm? That's because the Americans are in it. Call off the roadblocks between here and Mulligan. But why, sir? Because I don't trust information that was given to us by the American commando force. They've gone to Bruges. They are probably already in Bruges. I issued the orders that gave them the time to get there. 
tell the Fatros and Bruges to stop any German soldier who not personally known to them. Issue new passes to all the civilian population immediately and take anyone to Gestapo headquarters for questioning if they aren't in possession of the new passes. Yes, Colonel. But if we don't reinforce the radar station immediately, won't that give them time to attack? No. They are going to need the partisans and time to contact them. In the meantime, I don't want him to know that he's walking into a trap. Perhaps we can find a way to make the local resistance less than thrilled at the prospect of helping their American guests. Did you perhaps drop this book? No, I left it for you, Father. French cigarettes are a sterner test of character than the Nazis. I gave up for good before the war. Father, I can't risk it. But I was brought up by the nuns. I know every corner, every mouse hole of that hospital. You also know every member of the local resistance, every cell. If you get caught, we'll have you killed. Promise me that. There'll also be reprisals against your people. I must be certain you have no illusions about that. My friend, my countrymen have no illusions about the Third Reich.
gun. Have the men all been positioned? Two extra companies, Colonel. Good. Make sure they understand. Nothing whatsoever on the outside has to look any different than usual. I don't want to scare him off. The orders have already been issued. Good man, Steiner. I'm leaving to take personal command in half an hour. Is that wise, sir? Oh, probably not. And then Ahab wasn't wise about the veil either. Ahab, sir? Movie Dick. American novel. I studied it as a boy. You should read it. I will, sir. And what happened to this Ahab and his veil? Well... You should read it yourself. I don't want to spoil it for you. There's more to life than Wagner. I... I hope this American isn't kicked. I should like to meet him. What is it? It's a new German pass. Every civilian must have one, even the nuns. The young lady will need one if she's to get into the hospital. That one is mine. You say you have a man who can make documents. Please, come here. You can make a pass for Daniel, looks like that? My father here will see that you get what you need. Yeah, a piece of cake. I'll get Fecky to help me with the German. Good. Father. When was that pass issued? This morning. Why? Is this the day they normally issue them? No. No, it isn't. He knows. He's waiting for us. Oh, what I get to be on home, Shah, I tell you what. With my families, because I know who I am. And when I'm with my brothers, I'm with my brothers. Shah, we are so strong and proud, and I tell you what, we dance, and we sing, and all the pretty girls, all the pretty girls that want to dance with Lebex. So we dance, and we sing, and we sweat, and we laugh. Ooh -wee! I know you're in for rape. You know that. Did you? Okay. Okay. So what do you think, Chef? You and me strolling down Bourbon Street? Was you asking me on a date? Yeah. First Mardi Gras after the war. What do you think? I don't know. You think we'll make it back? Well, you hear what Lieutenant said? Everybody come on home. I'm scared. It's wearing that nun suit that spooks me. It's like people shouldn't carry guns under those things. And they shouldn't kill people. It's like blasphemy or something. Yeah. Well, the Lord take care of people in love, right? I thought that was fools and drunks. Yeah, you go to your church, I go to mine. We're going to get out. We're going to get out. We're going to have babies bouncing on our knees, pestering us to sing to them the ballad of Saint Elaine. Excuse me. Lieutenant says it's time for the lady to put on the nun clothes. Mm -hmm. First squadron, commence taxing from the west ramp. First squadron, Roger. 745, hold your position on the runway. Acknowledge. We'll call 745, hold it. In 25 minutes, the partisans are going to hit the Germans three miles south of here and buy us time. Our planes are already in the air, so that gives us 45 minutes from now to knock out the radar. Don't you worry, Lieutenant. We got old Jim Bowie and Davy Crockett backing them up. Right, Paco? Those two crackers got nailed at the Alamo. I think we're better off in Santa Ana.
I think I'm getting religion. Moskowitz, Peggy, get the German uniforms with you, just in case. Just in case of what? Just in case, I don't know what. Just in case he's got a little surprise for us. Who? Ziller. You make it sound personal. Maybe it is. Grammar, this is 721. We've lost all pressure on the number three engine. 721, can you maintain airspeed? Uh, negative. Request permission to return to base. Roger. Anything else he's got ringed around that hospital? I mean, wouldn't you? What's he waiting for? Remember, the radar installation is in the basement of the building. seen you before. Yes, that's right. They all look alike, don't they? Like soldiers in uniforms. I can never tell them apart. Yes. I suppose you're right. Go right in, Father. Thank you, my son. brings you here today? I am on my pastoral duties. What are you doing here? Well, let us say that we have prepared a reception for company we are expecting shortly. This is unspeakable. Using a hospital as a battlefield. I shall take it up with my bishop at once. Come. I'm afraid you have to postpone the visit to your bishop. You and the young sister may not leave the hospital. We are prisoners then? priest and a nun to protect you from the Americans. Where are the other sisters and the patients? They're in the chapel. My child, why don't you look at me? Why do you hold your eyes down so? She is a nun, Colonel Zeller. Have you never heard of modesty? 
Is it modesty, sister? Or something else. She doesn't understand what you're saying. Ah, she doesn't speak German. French, then. Vous parlez français, seulement? Je parle français. Bien? Perhaps she speaks only English. Colonel Zeller. She is a deaf mute, Colonel Zeller. She teaches the deaf children sign language. That is why she is here. My apologies, Father. You will find the children safely in the trap. and huddle up with leads here. They got a pass for him to be able to enter the hospital without question. Signed it, Colonel Zeller. All right, so what exactly am I looking for? Germans. He hasn't got him on the outside. My guess is he's got him on the inside. There's that or he's kind of stashed around here someplace just with... All right, if everything's normal, make it out to the rear gate and light up a smoke. In 10 minutes, Vernon and Roy will take out the tower guards and cut the phone lines. The sheer bet the second it hits a fan, the Jerry's will try and reinforce the troops at the hospital. Boynies and Brody will try and bottle them up. The only access road they can run support vehicles over. If all goes according to schedule, Father Lamont and Dana will join you at the rear door, and you Moskowitz take out the guides and signal us to come in. I've got to get to the rear entrance and talk to Danko. This place is crawling with Germans. I'll go with you. Father, I hope he likes you. But not so much that he wants to meet me straight away. They will not hesitate to shoot a nun. Well, this is one nun who's going to shoot back. trouble. You take as many of them as you possibly can. Get to the rear gate and take off your shirt. So they don't shoot you. If you're gonna put it that way, Lieutenant, I don't know how he could possibly say no. Remember what Mama used to say? Get a job? No. The life was one crummy thing after another, and you die. I never wanted to believe her. I guess she was right. Bernie, that's an awful thing to say at a time like this. An awful thing. this from? Colonel Zeller. Really? Colonel Zeller's inside. Why don't we ask him about it? Idiot. Of course he's inside. He gave me that pass so I could bring him reports from the garrison. 
now. I suggest that you take me to him immediately. Move! In four minutes, the partisans will hit. What's this? Why have you left, left your post? Who is this? He says he has to see Colonel Zeller. Show him the pass. I don't know any Corporal Miller. Miller? No, 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 no. They made the mistake. It's Moskowitz. Moskowitz? Yeah, yeah, like the poem. Roses are red, violets are blue, you are a Nazi and I am a Jew! <laughs> Back. Becky, leads, cover the front. Moskowitz is in trouble. Let's go! Shoot him! Blessed Say you remember. Where's Mardi Gras after the war? Baby's bouncing on her knees. Move out! Go! 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 
I take it to the chapel. The doctor. The doctor. Go. Hey, Lebeck, go. Let's go. Move out. Sounds like it's about to hit the fan with Chacho. Yeah, I had to open your big mouth, didn't you? Three minutes to blow that radar. Beryl, now's your chance to play Tarzan.
Lieutenant, she's gonna blow.
sir. Private party. What a pity. Be lucky you miss this one. Has Amanda turned traitor? Or is she the victim of a security scam? Stay tuned for Scarecrow and Mrs. King coming up next. Then at 11, 10 Central, Marshall Craddock bets his life that a good woman can straighten out a bad man. But is the other guy playing with a full deck? Don't miss Border Town here on the Family Channel. Violets are blue, you are a Nazi, and I am a Jew! 